to Matthew in chapter number 1. Matthew in chapter number 1. Beginning in verse 18, the Bible says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and thank you that we can come out this morning and sing songs unto you. But dear God, I pray as we come to this your message this morning, dear God, that you would um, set up hearts and minds that we could have our focus on you. Dear God, that may your name be lifted up and glorified through it in all, and we'll thank you and praise you for it's in Christ's name we pray, and amen. amen, amen. As we're coming towards Christmas, we realize for the most part the innocency, the purity of Christmas has been lost through worldliness, through commercialization of this time of year. If people were actually celebrating the Lord's birth, let's be honest, the church would be filled this morning. Amen. But as the years go and as the years pass, we see people getting further and further away from not just Christ's birth, but from God itself. Instead, what we see today, most people is celebrating Christmas in a worldly manner. It certainly bears their lives and shows the true sincerity of what they think and what they do. As we as Christians think about Christmas, we think about Christ's birth. And what it says and what it means and, and what it ought to mean to us. Today you have those that say Jesus is the reason of the season. Okay. And I understand that because we celebrate His birth. But then you have sinners or people that say sinners are the reason for the season. And honestly I really don't disagree with that either, because sinners are the object of His love and why He came. But the world says that Santa is the reason for the season. Now this one I completely reject. Christ is the focus. Christ and His birth. I believe we find the reason for the season in verse 21. In Matthew chapter number 1. The Bible says, He shall save His people from their sin. I want us to look at this phrase this morning. And listen, you could read it straightforward and understand it. But I want us 
to look at it in a different fashion this morning. We're going to look at it backwards. We're going to look at it backwards. The first thing I want us to think about and look at is the word sin. In Genesis 2, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, the Bible says, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of knowledge and good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. This is a simple command that God gave Adam and Eve. It, it was a command that was easily followed because they had trees all around this one tree that they could have eaten from. But there comes a time when they were in the garden and they disobeyed God's command. They listened to the serpent. They put off what God had said. And it cost mankind for it. Satan came in with his first tactic was a lie that caused you to doubt the very words of God and said, Did God say, Thou shalt not surely die? But you know, in Genesis chapter 5, God put an exclamation on what he said when eight times he said he died. Christ came in his birth because of sin. Sin had entered into the world and someone had to take and pay that sin penalty. As the word Emmanuel said, God is with us. He came to pay that sin penalty for us. And I thank God for that. Amen. Sin has been in the world since Adam and Eve. And, and sin has always needed to be paid for. And listen, if Christ would have never came, we'd have never had a payment for sin. But He came as a child, as a baby, to pay for our sin. But notice the word prior to sin is the word there. That word there is in a, a plural sense, not just identifying a group, but identifying everybody. As it says in Romans 5.11, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received atonement. The Bible says He come not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. I'm glad we had a, a God with vision that, that just didn't look down at individuals, but looked at all humanity. God is not a God that looks at individuals. Everybody's on the same plane. There's no one special or high. You know, all through history, what man has tried to do with nations or ethnic groups, man has always tried to make some group lesser than himself. They did it with the natives. They did it with Indians. They've done it with the Jews. <coughs> They've done it with everybody in the world. Right. Listen, if you go back and you look at Darwin's theory of evolution, what's he do? He puts the Jews at the bottom of the list. Why? That's who Satan hates the most. But God looked at their That includes you. That includes anybody that you've ever met. And he came for their sins. And I, 
You know, I still stand in maze, amazed and awe, thinking about how Christ for eternity was with the Father. How He took off His glory. It didn't stop being God. But He took off His glory. He came to this earth as a baby. I mean, you think about that. As a baby. So He can say, that he was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Come and suffer through times of hunger, times of thirst. We know he, the Bible says he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. But to go through many different things just for me. There. And just for you. A God that loves us so much. For there. And then we look at the word right before there. This is a, a very key word in understanding the Christian life. It's the word from. the word from. We are saved from our sin. We are not saved in our sin. And we are not saved to continue in sin. He came to save us from our sin. A lot of people want to take it and make it to where, well, he saved me, but I'm going to continue to do those things that I want to do. One, it, it, if you truly got saved, you're going to get chastened. If you're not getting the chastened, then did you truly get saved? No. You see, when you look, remember, especially when we get ready to go in this Bible study, look at the very words of Scripture. The words... God give for a reason. If they are the inspired words of God, then you need to pay attention to the words. And the Bible says He came to save us from our sins. In other words, save you, bringing you away from something. How can someone save you in a fire? Would you rather Him save you from the fire? That's right. Listen, when it comes to that kind of situation, I am very particular about the words they're going to use. If the fireman comes up and says, I'm going to save you in the flames. No, save me from the flames. Amen. If you want to stay in the flame, you stay there and save me from it. That's right. Why isn't it the same way when people get saved? Well, I want to him to save me in my sin. In other words, I want to continue in my sin. You see, there's no repentance in that. He saves us from. In Jeremiah 7, 10 and 11, the Bible says, And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. You see, those in the days of Jeremiah there in Judah, they were proclaiming, God has saved me, but they were continuing in their abominations. And God is telling them just what we read in Matthew, he said, did I save you to continue in your abominations? It's kind of being sarcastic here. Of course, we would say, no. But why do we live our life like that? 
I mean, if God has saved us from sin, why do we want to still want to live in sin? You say, well, I really don't want to live there. I'm just kind of stuck there. No. You're not stuck there. It's a choice you make. That's right. To stay there. But why is it? You know, that's always confusing to me because the Bible, doesn't it say if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. That's right. Doesn't the Bible still say that? Yeah. Amen. But we treat it as if any man be in Christ, he can continue to do what he wants to do. Nothing has changed. All things are the same. That's the way we want to read that verse. But that's not what God's Word says. The Bible says that He came to save us from our sin. And then... His people. Galatians 3, 26. The Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Also in 1 John 2, verses 1 and 2, My little children, these things I write unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. His people here is talking about His creation. It has to to line up with theirs. It has to to line up with John, or 1 John that we just read. It has to to line up with John 3.16. Listen, did He create all people? Yes. He came to save them from their sin. Now, is that, let's be reasonable here. Is everybody going to be saved? No. no. Is it God's fault? No. no. Could they have been? Yes. But there's those that choose not to. We were talking in Sunday school this morning about different people had different things that people had said to them, uh, went out witnessing to them about how they don't want to, if they use the phrase, live like us. Whatever that's supposed to mean. They, they don't want to give up, I've had them say, they don't want to give up their sin. Listen, what I've asked people this before. What is so important that you do in your life that is worth going to hell over? Really? I mean, is a beer worth going to hell over? Some people will say it is until they get there, until they're there like Lazarus. Mm. Or the rich man, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. You know, I, I th every time I think of the story of the rich man Lazarus, thinking about the rich man, I think of his uh, instant change in the way he thinks. Mm. That's right. Now, he can't get out of hell. But you know, the first thing that happens to him when he gets there, he decides he wants to be a soul now. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> He cries to Father Abraham and said, Go back to my brothers and tell them about this awful place so they don't come here. Send Lazarus back to them. He's wanting to do anything in the world to keep his family from coming there. And you know, those people, those people that have said things like that to you will probably be like the rich man. That first moment in hell, they're thinking that beer is not that important now. That this or whatever that was keeping them back from coming here. He came to his people. The next word to say. 
7.25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Do you know, a lot of people in the world treat salvation as probation. Salvation is not probation. You don't get saved for a, a period of time to see if you're worthy to be off of probation. And if I can use the world sense, free. You know, people, they go out and commit a crime or something like that. They, they go before the judge and the judge slaps two years probation on them. And someone watches them for two years and then decides, that, well, should they go into jail or do they get set free, completely free now if they, if they do everything right that they're supposed to do. Salvation is not probation. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Or the judge would have already brought the gavel on this old boy, and probably you too, and said, go to jail. It's not probation. He came to save, to pardon, to reconcile. The world. You. From the world. You think about when we think about when the world thinks about Christmas, they they think of presents and, and gifts and, and candy and all that stuff. Do you think about what Christ did for you? The reason why He came. The Bible says He came to save you from your sin. Amen. The next word is shall. Shall. I like Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Another word for shall is will. That gives a, a connotation of something being done without a doubt. You know, I have no doubt whatsoever where I'm going to spend eternity. I know that what he came to do, he did. And There's no doubt in my mind I've been saved from my sin. That I have a home in heaven. Amen. What he started with, the work he began in me, I know, like the Bible says, he'll finish it until the day of Christ. Mm -hmm. It will be finished. Christ accomplished everything that he came to do, but it had to start at his birth. He started at his birth. It was very important how he came. You know it was very important when he came. Because his coming was predicted many hundreds of years before he came. When a sinner comes to Christ by faith, there's a shall there and not a may. I thank God for We, listen, have you ever heard the phrase, you can take that to the back? <laughs> well, you can take that to the back. And then he. He. In Isaiah 43, 11. The Bible says, I, even I, am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. There's none like him. He is the one and only, the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Mm -hmm. He is the one who created you. He's the one who created all this. Mm -hmm. He's the one that gives you 
the very breath that you breathe, the air that you breathe, the water that you drink, the food that you eat. He is the, the giver of all good things, the Bible says. But he's also the giver of salvation. He's, give, he's the one that gives you the pardon. Listen. He's the one that gives grace. Amen. He shall save his people. I thank God for that. Listen, you ought to thank God for it too. Amen. Without Him, where would we be? Without the pardon, without the gift, would we still be on our way to hell? Yes. It took that gift to make a way. I thank God. Thank God that He showed me the way. I didn't find it. It was shown to me. I praise God I had enough sense to climb a board. Amen. You see, a lot of people have this misconception. I found religion. Listen, you don't find salvation. You might find religion. You don't find salvation. God shows you salvation. Then you choose to get on board or not. Yeah. I, I thank God. I thank God the wise men seen the storm. I thank God that they followed or they went to Jerusalem. God showed them the star again. They came and found the little lad. Don't know how old he was when they found him. <coughs> he wasn't in the manger then. He was at home in a house. But I thank God he was there. Amen. Amen.